Boatworks Today is a viewer-supported show. To learn more on how you can get involved and watch extended ad-free versions of these videos, please visit our website, boatworkstoday.com, and click on the top of the heading where it says support this show. Thank you. Shortly after I applied the first coat on here, I got uh, pulled away with work and I missed my recoat window, I guess, where I can just come back and then apply the second coat without having to do anything more with the surface. So when, uh, with, with the brushing activator, which is what we used, if you wait more than 12 hours between coats, then you need to basically scuff the surface again or sand it back down, clean it, you know, prep it just like we did initially, and then you can con you know, continue on. So, you know, I guess that's not the end of the world. That's not the end of the world uh, that I missed that because there is, there is a fair amount of dust that's in here. Uh, I'd, I'd cleaned everything off pretty well. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm wondering if there's just, you know, some, some lint or some dust or whatever that's trapped inside the rollers. And then as you're, you know, uh, rolling the paint out, then you know it's the, whatever's on there is just flowing off and into the paint. So just a guess, just a guess, because uh, that's, that's typically kind of somewhat relating this over to, to varnish. Whenever you're, whenever you're varnishing a piece, nine times out of ten, the, the specs that you get on the piece are flowing off of the brush. It's not necessarily airborne uh, particles, but it's usually you know, stuff that's coming off the brush. So that's what I suspect is going on here. So I'm going to save, save you some boredom. I'm going to take this outside. I'm going to wet sand it with some 600 grit, come back in and clean it. And then before we apply our second coat, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take the, uh, one of these rollers and I'm going to roll it back and forth for, uh, for a minute or two over some tape. So anything that is on there, hopefully the tape will be able to pull that off and we'll be able to get a nice clean coat. So let me get this prepped and I'll be right back. So with the sanding done, our prep work going forward is going to be exactly what we outlined in the first video. So to start with, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe down this panel with their cleaning solvent. Again, using two rags, one to apply and one to wipe off. And then after that, then I'm going to get our paint mixed up. And while that's, you know, sitting and, and doing its thing, then I'm going to be going over this panel with a tack rig just to remove any possible dust that may have settled on the surface. Now at this point, I think we're ready. I think we're set. I'm going to be applying the paint exactly the same way as we did the first time. So I'm going to load up the roller and then I'm going to try and squeeze as much as I can of it back off before we start applying it to the panel here. So. And I'm going to call this done. So now I'm just going to walk away, stay out of the shop area so that this can kind of flow out and settle a little bit. And I'll come back in about 10, 15 minutes and see how it looks. Okay, it has been about a half an hour since, we, since I rolled this on. And I, I will admit, when I first finished, you know, when I first rolled it on and, and started walking away, I was looking at it, I'm like, mm, I, I don't know about this. But it did flow out, okay? It, 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 it looks a lot better now than it did right off the, uh, right off the roller. Going over that roller with, uh, with the tape just to pull any, you know, lint or whatever, anything that might be on there, going over with the tape made a huge difference, huge. Uh, there is still a very, there, there is a very tiny amount of dust and a bug did a, a suicide bomb in here, but um, big difference, night and day. So if, if you go to use this, I would highly, highly recommend that you go through and, and run that roller over some tape two, three, four times. I mean, the more you roll it, the cleaner it's going to be. So what do I think about the overall quality of the finish that you get with this paint? Well, before I start, let me, let me first talk a little bit about what I think this paint is and what this paint is not. This, in my opinion, this paint is designed for the DIY person that's looking to get you know, decent results when, when they apply it, you know, by rolling. Now, this paint is not designed for the DIY person that is expecting to get professional, flawless, a mirror finish when rolling it. This, this paint certainly can be sprayed, in which case you might be able to get that, but rolling it, that's just not going to happen. Now, when I contacted EMC to get some samples for this paint, I specifically wanted to get the, the rolling paint. I mean, I could have gotten the spray option, but uh, to be honest, I mean, most, almost everyone who is trying to paint their boat, whether in their backyard or their garage or, you know, even at the marina outside in the yard, they're pretty much going to be restricted to having to roll it. And since that's the way most of you are going to, you know, be limited to applying this, that's what I wanted to look at. 
So when I'm going through my pros and cons here, uh, keep that in mind. This is referring to rolling this product only. It is not you know, referring to spraying at all. So what do I think are the, the pros or the, the positive uh, things to, to mention about this paint? Well, first off, I mean, it is extremely easy to apply. I mean, I don't think it could really get any easier. <laughs> you're just, you're rolling it on. Uh, prep is very minimal. Um, one person application really, you know, when you, if you were looking at another, another line of paint where you're rolling and tipping, it can be done with one person, but it's a lot easier if you've got a second person following up behind you doing the tipping. So one person rolling, one person tipping. Uh, eliminating that out of this application schedule, you're down to one person. So one individual can go around and paint the entire hull by themselves. It is able to be repaired. You know, and that's, from my perspective, you know, as a person that repairs this stuff, that is very, very, very important. Uh, if you're not able to maintain your finish, you know, four, five, six years later, after you've got a bunch of little nicks and dings and dock rashes, all of a sudden, what used to look really nice is going to look like hell. So, able to repair this paint, certainly, certainly a, a very positive aspect of this paint. Now, gloss, it does have a very high gloss to it. It is a very hard paint, the, as far as like scuff resistance and stuff. When I, when I was trying to sand this, you really had to work the surface quite, quite aggressively to, to get the, the, you know, an initial scratch pattern into it that was uniform. So it, it is a very hard paint, which, again, can translate into it's going to be a very scuff resistant paint. So, you know, we'll, we'll look at that as, as a positive note for this paint. Okay, so there are, so those are the, what I feel are the, the four, I guess, most prominent positive things to say about it. Now, when you're talking about the cons or the negative things about it, the, the biggest downfall for me is the fact that you're left with orange peel. And it does do a very good job flowing out, but it's not going to flow out to be that perfect, flawless mirror finish. It's just, it just, it just doesn't. <laughs> just, it is what it is. If you're rolling something on, don't expect it to, to be as good of a finish as a spray type application. It's just not going to happen. So overall, do I think that this is a paint that you would be happy with? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, to be honest, I, it, it all comes down to, you know, what it is that you're looking for and what your expectations are. If you are looking for that absolutely perfect, flawless mirror finish and you're limited to, to rolling this paint on, I suspect you're, you're going to be left wanting a little bit. You know, it's just, it's not going to give you that. Now, on the other hand, if you're looking for, you know, just a decent looking finish that's going to look good when, you know, when, uh, for someone that's, you know, when you're walking down the dock or you're passing somebody on the lake, and the, and the, if that's what you're looking for, then I think that this would work very well for you. Beyond that, I'm not really quite sure what more I have to, to add here. I mean, I've, I've already kind of talked about it. It's, what, I, what I will suggest is that if you decide to go with this, and with any paint, any time you're trying a new product, do some tests before you take the product to your project. Because <laughs> it's a lot easier to, you know, to, to do some experimenting on a small little sample like I did on my panel than it is after you've already painted a 20-foot boat. You know, so now you've got a lot of area to try and rework and, and fix. So now, just as a reminder, the next topic that we're going to be switching over to is going to be the, the start of my Rhodes project, or the Rhodes 19 project. What I'm going to be going over is uh, just kind of going through the boat and assessing the damage that I'm, that I'm able to see. I'm sure there's going to be more once we start opening things up and, and looking a little bit deeper. But so we're, we'll, we'll do a quick one over, kind of assessing some of the obvious damage, as well as kind of give you some peek behind the scene as far as how we were able to get this thing lifted up and yanked out of a field. Look forward to that. If you have any questions or you know comments about anything that I talked about with uh, you know with Quantum or the Genius Bucket, uh, feel free to leave those down below in the comment section. If this is your first time here, I would love to have you subscribe to my channel. I'll include a link for that right up in here. And if you happen to miss part one of this overview of the uh, Quantum 99 or the, the Genius Bucket, I'll include a link for the, the part one of this uh, two-part series, I guess, right down in here. 
Now, as always, I want to thank you for your time. I greatly appreciate you watching these videos. If you happen to enjoy these videos, you know, please give some thought to giving it a thumbs up. And until next time, thanks for watching. This has been a Bootworks Today Protection.